I want to talk a little bit, not as a complete uh, uh, talk, but as using it as a base about one of the koans from the Mumon Khan, Case 19 from the Mumon Khan, which is one of the great koan collections. It means the gateless gate. This, is, this case is entitled, Ordinary Mind is the Way. And it involves two of the great figures in Zen history, Master Joshu and Master Nansen. At this time, however, Joshu was a student of Master Nansen. And one day he earnestly asked Nansen, what is the way? Nansen answered, <coughs> the ordinary mind is the way. And Joshu asked, should I direct myself toward it or not? And Nansen said, if you try to turn toward it, you go against it. So Joshu, of course, utterly mixed up, said, if I do not try to turn toward it, how can I know that it is the way? And Nansen answered, the way does not belong to knowing or not knowing. Knowing is delusion. Not knowing is a blank consciousness. When you have really reached the true way beyond all doubt, you will find it as vast and boundless as outer space. How can it be talked about on a level of right or wrong? At these words, Joshu was suddenly enlightened. Now, about this case, there is a verse. The spring flowers, the moon in autumn, the cool breezes of summer, the winter snow. If idle concerns do not cloud the mind, this is man's happiest season. I think I prefer the translation of Shibiyama for the last two lines. He says, if there is no vain cloud in your mind, for you, it is a good season, spring, summer, autumn, whatever. If there is no vain cloud in your mind, for you, it is a good season. Now, these are ancient words and with all the confusion that this sort of thing usually engenders in us. See, there's a lot of nonsense about the way. I mean, it's something we're going to get to know, we think. It says, knowing is delusion. Not knowing is a blank consciousness. It's not a question of knowing or not knowing something. The verse makes it more clear. If there is no vain cloud in your mind, for you it is a good season. If there's no vain cloud on your mind, today, Saturday, February the 3rd, is a good day. If there's no vain cloud in your mind, no matter what this day is for you, whether from the standpoint of our usual concerns, it's a happy day, an unhappy day, a distressing day, a boring day. If there's no vain cloud in your mind, for you it is a good season. Ordinary mind is the way. We, we could just say ordinary life is the way, or ordinary is the way. See, what do I mean then? Or what do any of the sayings that we can read mean when, when we say there is no life or death? See? Nothing but life and death. And on the other hand, there is no life or death. See? The reason we get confused is because we're trying to figure it out. See, 
there's just this That's all life is, just this absolute moment. From a human point of view, that can be lifting a coffee cup, balancing your checkbook, talking to your girlfriend. It's not life and it's not death, it's just what it is. Now from our self-centered point of view. It seems as though we come and go. And in the ordinary sense, we do. But if we get this point, that there's just this absolute moment of being, which is what we avoid with all our might, then these questions fade away. There's no problem. If there's no vain cloud in your mind, for you, it is a good season. But there is a vain cloud in our mind, almost perpetually. I would say to some of the new people, you know, it's very rare that we can just sit and just be ourselves for 20 seconds. That means having no vain cloud in your mind, just sitting here. But we do have a vain cloud in our mind. Because we don't understand this basic fact that life at any second in any gesture and in any act is absolute. The absolute and the relative are not two different things. We're not suddenly going to find some mysterious place where all our troubles disappear. See, that mysterious place is simply what? Just this very second. See, anyone who truly gets what it's to live like that does not worry about anything. If you can just be the second, we know, and without any intellectual or non-intellectual effort, what our life truly is. We can think of a great life that is life and death, at the same time, it transcends life and death. But to think that it's something other than just what we are at this very second is where we get into trouble. Then we are ceaselessly leaving this moment to look somewhere else. And we'll never, never find it. Trying to think about it, figure it out, worry about books, There is no vain cloud in your mind. For you, it is a good season. It is a good day. Just being at work with the people you don't want to be at work with, that's it. <coughs> Not somewhere else. Now, we don't like that. As human beings, we want relief from this life that seems to bother us. We want relief from our present worries and difficulties and the people that mistreat us or so we think. We want relief. We want to find some place other than this. Now, I've said it a thousand times and in a thousand ways. But this life that transcends life and death is nothing but what? Just whatever you're doing. And, and also, whether you like it or not. Now, I don't always get this. But sometimes I do. And we get it more often and more quickly the more years we practice. So some of you are quite new to practice. Some of you have been sitting for many years. But it's always hard for us to get that it's just this. 
and that this may not be what we had in mind. So I want each one of you to think in your life right now, what is it that you don't want to be this? It's usually a person. Or it could be a situation composed of persons. It could be something that's difficult for us to do or distasteful. It could be being tired when we don't want to be tired or sick when we don't want to be sick. If it's who you are at this very second, see, that is it. Now, the difficulty of practice is that's not what we want to hear. We want obvious comfort. As a nation, we're slowly going downhill because we're geared only to looking for what? Immediate, obvious comfort. And there's nothing wrong in comfort, per se. I'm not saying that. But it's the search for it. The feeling that somewhere, somehow, it exists if I could just find it. It's already here. Right now. Whatever you feel and are, that's it. What are you looking for? You're always looking for something. So I've got a sore knee that I banged. That's it. Just that sensation itself. But you can say a sore knee isn't very significant. See, who said this had to be anything? Of course it's not significant, it's just what? It's a sore knee. When you have really reached the true way beyond all doubt, a sore knee, you will find it as vast and boundless as outer space. What do they mean that? Vast and boundless. As outer space, it means it has no space or time at all. It just hurts. That's all. How can that be talked about on a level of right and wrong? It's not right or wrong, it's just what? It's just there. At these words, Joshua was suddenly enlightened. He got it. Should I direct myself toward it or not? See, Joshua. What do I do? See? Where will I go? If you try to turn towards it, if you're trying to find it, if you're trying to look for it, you go against it. You'll never find it. See, my sore knee is already, what? It's here. See, there's nothing I have to know about that. What would I know? Knowing is delusion. Not knowing is just a blank consciousness. If idle concerns do not cloud the mind, that's the first version, this is man's happiest season. What is man's happiest season? Whatever season it is, right this second. Whatever we are, right this second. See, we think our idle concerns are ourselves, you know. But she really was unfair to me. You don't understand. See, life is very unfair. He 
See, the whole point is to begin to see what practice is, and then we do it. How many times? In a way, there's only one time, but to us it looks like 10,000 times. See, this way, the Tao, it sounds so special, doesn't it? Nothing special. And yet, understanding this as we do, if we practice patiently over time, life is very different for us. And for many of you, I see that happening. And for me, I see it happening. If you think I'm not practicing, think again. The things that bother me. If they do, though, the only difference is I know they're my practice. I'm not going to try to blame somebody else for them. Ordinary mind is the way. Ordinary life is the way. Ordinary life is that life which transcends life and death. Unborn, undying. See, that isn't born, it doesn't die. It just is. It's what we are. The more clearly we see that, then the different conditions of our, this body that we get so concerned about we're born, we have a youth and middle age, and we get old, and the energy runs out, and one day we die. No problem, because each second is absolute. It's perfect in being as it is. Okay, any questions? <coughs> yes? What is the relationship between accepting the moment rather than blaming people and wanting people negotiation to modify their behavior. So there is interaction. Of course there's interaction. But see, each moment of interaction is also it. Do you see what I mean? See, you're, it sounds to me as though you're trying to find a place to stand on, and out of that you're going to negotiate. See, the negotiation itself is it. But from your point of view, if it's clouded, with your own personal expectations and desires and views of the situation, uh, it's going to go very poorly. Because then you've added on to just each moment your ideas about it. I'm not saying not to negotiate or to do anything that's necessary. We have to solve life's problems. But each moment of the sol solving is what? See, that's it. You, know, you try to present a point of view and they don't get it, they just yell at you. Uh -huh. We've all had that happen. See, just that's it. But in experiencing that and not getting caught, you can quickly move on and you keep moving. And it works. It works better at least than anything else. Remember that we're not trying to make life work. <coughs> we're just experiencing as it is. And as we do that, it usually works very well. But the aim isn't to try to make it work. Everybody confused? <laughs> huh? <coughs> see, the more I see people practicing well, the more their life is more harmonious, things work better, things do go better. But not because they're trying to do that. I know, there's always that paradox. And that's, uh, Wait, what we're talking about. Does somebody have a hand up here? Chuck? Uh, you, you mentioned behavior, changing behavior, and uh, we've talked before about people and their behavior. Uh -huh. And I had an opportunity this morning to have more insight into the uh, people and behavior. I, m most of the time, go around having contempt for people because of their behavior. Mm -hmm. And I tend to equate the two, mm -hmm. one and the same. In those rare instances, it's usually one of the more major events that happens in our life, and I can act more out of compassion, then the behavior becomes almost secondary, and yet it's effectively being addressed. Right. 
And that's true. Until we have enough practice that we can actually experience this for ourselves in a way it remains like a door that's closed. And practice is to begin to understand this and to keep moving. Okay, anybody else? Yes, first, uh, Stephen? You said at the beginning there was only one thing we could do for those who died. Mm-hmm. You said I didn't hear what it was. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I only knew. Mm-hmm. Well, it's obvious. As we understand that Where would you go? Are you here? See, it's really the question, not whether you go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> See, we think we're here. That's the, that's the main problem. As long as we think we're here, then we have a, a body and mind that we want to think about because we've got to protect them. And uh, the whole game begins right there. Elizabeth? Uh, just going back to Kuneet's question, I have, we have a similar situation at work right now where uh, there is a need for negotiation about mm-hmm. how certain things are getting done by teachers in the mm-hmm. classroom. And, and I'm, I find myself usually righteous or indignant or um, irritated, and those are the times I'm the least likely to look and see the huge vein cloud in my mind. And just being upset is, is uh, such a pointer that that means there's a, a vein cloud in your mind, or, or you'll just be dealing with what needs to be done. Yeah, uh, see, Zen practice is about doing what needs to be done. I mean, I certainly can't emphasize that enough. It's not about doing nothing. But uh, if we don't see the vain cloud in our own mind, I can assure that what you do, you'd probably be better off not doing it. Anyway, you had a question, Chris? Yeah, um, it seems like with some forms of work, you you need to, um, like you'd mentioned before about not trying to do anything, well, that doesn't mean not to do anything. Right, no, I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but it yeah. seems like with some forms of work, I'm thinking about the talk last, last week uh, with the, you know, the great quarterback, that to... <laughs> he did all right, by the way. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. But to get to that point, it seems like the best way is to take a concentrative approach, almost a self-centered approach. And I don't know... Mm. For throwing a football, that might be true. Yeah, say his job is throwing a football. Right. And he's got to train himself. Yeah. And and Uh if he waits until he's 50, I mean, if he... Uh Uh-huh, okay. If it takes too long, he's not going to be able to do it. (laughs) All right. Yeah, and that's what I meant. There's a difference between that kind of samadhi and the samadhi that develops over years of practice, because I presume that he likes to throw a football. I don't know. I haven't asked him, but... um, The samadhi that we want is not a samadhi that shuts anything out, which a concentrated practice does. But nevertheless, it's a true samadhi. Just embracing everything is the same as, if you embrace everything, it's the same as embracing nothing. Anyway, this is a very fine point, and it would take a whole Dharma talk to rip that one apart. But uh, paradoxically, people who sit and know what it is to just embrace everything can rapidly concentrate that when necessary into one one action, such as throwing a football. <clears throat> I'm not answering your question. It's too complicated. I can't think of it right now. So, yeah, Paul. I don't know if this is of any use, but I've been intrigued. Uh, Shinzen mentioned that uh, in the West we have this idea of concentration as a kind of a tense thing. Mm-hmm. And he was suggesting that we, you think about concentration as simply letting go of everything that's irrelevant. Well, it's all right, but to let go of what's irrelevant is a little bit thoughtful. Do you see what I mean? It gets a little bit, how do you know what's irrelevant? See? Um, so, I think I know what he's saying, but I don't think it's very well said. Okay. Yeah, well, the one thing would be the, the impulse of is completely different instead of a tightening as a letting go. Yeah, well. That, uh, at least, that's... that's I, I, I just use the phrase total awareness, and uh, 
And that, if you're totally aware and not caught by your thoughts, you will be in samadhi. <clears throat> a very alert present, that's what life is. It's, uh, just sitting here talking with each other is what it is if you're not concerned with your own self-centered thoughts about that. That is samadhi. Okay, Liz. I think the word let go uh, bothers me more than the word irrelevant because I spent the first eight years of my practice trying very hard to let go. Yes. I, and now yeah. I've been doing body work for the next ten years of my practice trying to get, you know, deal with the kinks from the trying to let go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't try to let anything go. It just doesn't work that way. Things let go and uh, we no longer have any interest in them and they just drift away. Mm -hmm. Laura. I agree with you. There's nothing that's irrelevant, you yeah. see. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine mm -hmm. anything being irrelevant. No, there isn't. Good practice includes everything. Mm -hmm. Even the vain cloud in our mind is not irrelevant, you see. So, all right, this is probably con producing more confusion. Anyway, what's the next confused question <laughs> for, a confu <laughs> for a confused teacher? Okay, what, what goes on? Yes, Michael. Not that much a contradiction between concentrating and letting go of yourself. Uh, for instance, just to take a, a homely example that uh, I've, I've had experience with, and I think everybody else too. If you're cutting vegetables, and if you're just looking at a knife and the vegetable, and you're just doing that, mm -hmm. you'll be cutting vegetables very well. So but if you start thinking, hey, I'm doing this very well, I cut myself. <laughs> True, and also even that, in that instance, if you're cutting vegetables, it doesn't mean you don't hear somebody speaking out in the yard. You can totally just be cutting vegetables and you can hear what's going on around you. Uh, see, a lot depends on how we define some of these terms, such as uh, awareness, concentration, and so on. But anyway. Well, there isn't any time. But no, there's no time. Mm -hmm. no. I want to take issue with uh, Jean Klein's notion that there is no such thing as an individual. That there what? That there is no such thing as an individual. I think oh, life wow. would be very dull if we were like lumpy mass. But he didn't say that. <laughs> see, I, I, I often say there's no individual either. But that's not what he means, see. Mm -hmm. Definitely we function as, but there's a, a big difference between being uh, differentiated and being separate. Ah, I like that. Mm-hmm, yeah. No, to say there's no self doesn't mean that uh, we don't go home, fix lunch, go to the movies. Anyway, we'll work on that more. Anybody else? All right, you're all clear that ordinary mind is the way. Ordinary life is the way. All right. I know you are or aren't, but I at least want to see the main thing we're always battling is we don't think that this could be it. We think it has to be somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Nobody thinks, I know your knees hurt. Nobody thinks that's it. Do you see what I mean? Of course it's it. Stephen? You look real puzzled over here. What's going on? <laughs> Anything you want to ask? No. No, okay. Anybody else down here? <clears throat> all right. You all got it? <laughs> no? It's so special because we're ordinary. <laughs> well, that's a thought, okay. <laughs> See, there's nothing to get. This is what I'm trying to tell you. It's the fact that we think there's something to get that keeps us so miserable. That there is a solution for our life, but you are your life. You don't have to have a solution. Gwen, is your hand up there? Yeah. Always a surprise when you wake up and discover that what the heck you've been so worried about all of that. Hmm. 
Well, you know, and, and, yeah. and these are just kind of little moments now and then. But it's, it's yeah. kind of, that's kind yeah. of what's happening. Well, when we're worried or upset, we can't possibly see beyond that. It's just like, it is a cloud, as mm -hmm. he said. Yeah. It covers everything. Okay, well, I think, uh, well, yeah, Cindy. That's, uh, that's the hardest thing for me is, is uh, unless the time it doesn't occur to me, but that that cloud, you know, when I have some issue that I'm trying to deal with, I, you know, that it's the issue that can't possibly, I mean, there's got to be a way out of the issue or there has to be some kind of solution or that it's, it's uh -huh. that's not, that can't be my practice. Uh-huh, okay, all right. See, what we will do inevitably is to keep trying to find a solution. And what practice does is to really slowly uh, knock that down, you might say. And it takes years, because we all want a solution. And there isn't any. But we're not going to just listen to somebody say that and stop. We can't stop, really. We keep it up, and we keep it up, and we keep it up. But practice is watching us keep it up, you see what I mean? And the more you watch yourself doing these things, uh, they begin to just settle out in some, some sense. Again, you can't try to stop it, but you can watch it happen. Okay, let's uh, <laughs> finish. <clears throat>